Okay, I'm going to try a woolly bugger on a mustard R75 size 6 streamer hook. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing we need is uh, put a silver bead on. These are tungsten, 3.8 millimeter for this hook, and attach our tying thread. Just behind the bead there. Now if you want the bead to stay in the position, if it's a slotted bead, you put your thread in the slot and sorry, there we go. You take it quite a few times inside the slot. That'll hold it in position while you do your tying. So, go back to where you're going to attach the base of the tail, remove that. <coughs> now the tail, this will be a white woolly bugger, and this is my favourite marabou, uh, especially in white. This is absolutely fabulous. Uh, you can't get anything that is, I've not found anything that is so uh, white and a fluorescent white as this. So well worth an investment that. So when you choose the plume, the marabou plume for your woolly bugger tail, I, there are some that like it very thick, short. I like my marabou and there's some that even cut it to a straight uh, edge. But I like this marabou that goes to a very fine taper. I think it uh, gives the absolutely best movement in the water. It's uh, much more animated than the thicker stuff. So pull the marabou through. Now you see all this here at the bottom. What we have to do here is just stretch out the plume like this and then you'll find this stuff at the bottom that is all scraggy. Not very nice at all. So we'll remove that. That's looking okay. Maybe those are there as well. That's looking better. So the length of the tail, again, it's a discussion. I like to have it about the same length as the hook shank. Uh, you can have it longer, but then you increase your factor of it hanging up around the hook shank uh, bend when you're fishing it or casting. So there's still a bit of that there. Don't like that. Shorter stuff. Have that out as well. So that's beginning to look better. So about the length of the hook shank, need to shorten that a little bit. There we go. So I'll tie that in there now. And again using Dyneema. There we go. Then you have a, a really nice fine tapered tail that will undulate in the water. Now I like to make the hook shank the same diameter all the way along. So I like to tie in this marabou right and up to or just behind, should I say, the hook, uh, the, the bead head. So there we go. I can trim that off now. There we are. Get rid of that. Tie that down. That'll give you a nice foundation for the chenille body. So there's the tail. <coughs> now, uh, I like to have a little bit of flash in this and I use the Veniard uh, crystal, UV pink crystal flash. I think that goes really well with this. We only need a couple of strands. I'll show you what we do with them. So we can take one at a time. It's easier actually. You get them more perfect if you take one at a time. 
So we'll just put this one in here, just with a couple of turns of thread. That's all you need. Now, if you pull on this, because it's trilobable, this crystal flash, you see it turns as I pull it through, twists around. Now you pull that through until you get it in the absolute position you want it, and it will stay there. There we go. So we'll just tie that down. Like that. Then we can trim that off. Put this one in. Go up the hook shank with a couple of turns. And do the same with this. Pull it in. Getting a bit messed up there. Pull it, there we go, that will do me, that will do, and then I want one more on top of the hook shank. So, and don't overdo this, all you need is a hint of flash, so we'll just pull that through again, um, there is perfect for me. Tie this off. Now, some length of white chenille. This again is a fluorescent chenille. And again, I want the hook shank more or less the same diameter all the way so I get a nice body. So we'll have that on. Tie that in nice and good at the tail base there, so you don't get any movement in your first turn. And up to the bead head. So we take the first one over the tail, this will hold it all nice and together. There we go. So, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So then we'll go around that and we'll tie off that chenille. Just remove that. Yep. A couple of more turns, then uh, we need a saddle hackle. The saddle hackles, again, are vineyards and are brilliant. I buy them strung in thousands, uh, cost very little in comparison to the material you get for what you pay for it. And they're perfect for buggers and saltwater patterns. So we want this hackle 90 degrees to the hook shank, right behind the bead. So I'll just tie that in there. And then we can remove that now. We're going to finish off up there, so using Dyneema, so I'll spin it clockwise to Tighten the threads together and I'll go back against the grain of the chenille and to the tail base like that. Tighten that up. Now I like to use a hackle plier on these because I tend to get very short at the end through using all the hackle. Okay, that's the first turn. Then we want to go back in nice even turns and 
all the way. And you see if you tie the hackle in with the stem you get a nice taper of the hackle getting shorter at the back. This also gives a, a better swimming action. So we get to that and then we'll go around, tie the hackle off. There we go. And then give my thread a spin again, clockwise. And then I will go through the hackle. This will not only hold it down but also strengthen it. And Dyneema is a hundred times stronger than wire. So, and it's salt water resistant. So now we can tie this off at the head. Whip finish. Again, right behind the bead head. And you'll feel when it slips into place when you tighten your bobbin. It's important that this bead doesn't move. There we go. Now remove your tying thread. Not quite finished yet. So what I do now to get the perfect uh, bugger, I'll wet the hackle, just moisten it and the tail. Like this. And Lying around my tying bench I have a lot of bits of straw like this and this one I made a little slit in the end so once your bugger is moistened you put this on carefully and I'll tell you what I'll turn that over so you can see it better so you can see where the cut is there's the cut just give that a moisten again I slide that over, over the hook like that. Then we can take that out. And I put that to one side. And let it dry while I tie the next one. Okay, and through the magic of photography, when the uh, fly is dried, you remove the drinking straw and you have a more or less perfect woolly bugger. Can't be faulted really.